All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. It's great to be back once again for the, or in my case, for my photography masterclass, but in general, Masterclass Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It is uh, great to be streaming to you live once again here on Adobe Live. And uh, Masterclass Friday, for those of you who are new, first of all, my name is Terry White. Welcome. I'm the uh, photography evangelist here at Adobe. So I do a weekly masterclass on photography and mostly post-production, but we're going to get back in the studio and do some shoots, uh, I think for the next masterclass, which is in two weeks. But anyway, great to see you all here. Um, great to see, have so many of you watching on the various platforms. I see you over on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and, and pretty much everywhere else. Uh, including Adobe Live. So speaking of which, uh, this is a chance for me to do some housekeeping. If you are watching on another platform, that's cool. You can watch, you can hang out. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. This show is live every Friday with the exception of global Adobe days off, which is next Friday. But every Friday uh, at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern my time, and uh, we do about an hour of photography related topics. So if you're interested in participating in the chat, asking questions, um, want me to see your questions, want me to see what you say, uh, then you wanna definitely uh, point your browser over to b.net slash Adobe Live. That's the chat that I look at. So I see a chat over there on YouTube where I see uh, Sam Peterson, which is our moderator answering someone. And I see my chat over here on this other YouTube with William saying something. And William can't wait. <laughs> and Angie, uh, hello, happy Masterclass Friday. But I can't keep bouncing back and forth between all the different chat windows. So that's why we pay attention to the one chat window, which is right here, uh, if you want us to see or want me to see your, your comments. Um, so with that said, today is my favorite photography masterclass topic, with the exception of doing a live shoot. My favorite topic is how I would edit your photos. So about a, uh, four or five days prior to the actual class, so like on Monday, I think it was, I put out a social media post. I give people a link. They can upload their photos. I still have photos left over from last time um, and the time before that and the time before that. So I never have, I never run out of photos to use to edit. But these, none of these are mine. In other words, these, I, I didn't take a single one of these shots. These are shots that you, the user community, submit it and I'm just showing you what I would do if I'd taken this shot. <clears throat> so I might give you a little bit of um, um, creative feedback from the photography standpoint, but it's mostly about the editing because I'm looking at a shot that's already been taken. So um, rarely do we get a chance to go back and redo it. So I have, to, I, have, I have to deal with the cards that were dealt me. Also, I see in the house today, uh, Jason Levine. Jason Levine is our audio and video expert. And Jason also does a master class on Friday. I think in his is coming up in maybe two or three hours from now. Uh, so I'm doing uh, this one. Then next up is the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge, then Paul Tranny, and then I believe it's Jason after Paul. Um, and then we have, um, Jason will do audio and video after Paul does Photoshop. And after Jason, I believe is Howard doing UX UI design. And then uh, after Howard is Kyle doing drawing and, and digital art. So a uh, full day of masterclass learning every Friday, except our days off, which is next Friday, by the way, in case you haven't didn't catch that earlier. So next Friday, I will not be doing a masterclass, but I think I will be back in the studio that following Friday with a live shoot. I have some new lighting gear I'm dying to try out. And um, so we'll, we'll try and do a live shoot, maybe even with a real person, who knows, you know, with COVID, but we might be able to socially distance and do a shoot next Friday. All right, so uh, two Fridays from now, next, not next Friday. All right, so with that said, uh, let's go ahead and dive into, um, I'm actually gonna start off with a photo that I left off on the last time I did this. So I think I want to start there because there was something I wanted to show. I couldn't show it yet because it wasn't officially released yet. And now that it's officially released, I can finish this edit before we move on and take a look at some other photos. All right, so let me go ahead and show you my computer. Um, these are some of the submissions I've had in the past. These aren't any of the new ones from this week. So if you don't see yours here, don't worry. I, I got yours in, in, in another album in Lightroom. 
Uh, but one of the photos I, I left off on last week was this photo. This was the fo this was the original, and it's uh, it's like a motocross motocross shot with a cool biker, you know, coming down this 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 very dangerous looking hill. But the thing that immediately takes away from it, and I explained this last time, is the fence and the bushes, and it just kind of looks so so like. Yeah, he's he's up there and he's doing you know doing something I couldn't do, but it just it, the fence is what really takes it away. Now, I I, I painstakingly went through a, a process of getting rid of the fence using a patch tool. There are other ways to do it, and I I you know I wasn't perfect in the spokes here. I'd still spend a little bit more time in the spokes getting that all out, but we took the fence out and we took out uh, some of these bushes that were here that just didn't add anything to the photo, and just that alone. Is a, is a, in my opinion, a night and day improvement. Again, I have more work to do if I were really going to finish this. But one of the things I would have shown you a few weeks back or even a month or so back, or God, it's been a long time since I showed this, a while back when I showed this, was that I would have gone one step further. And let's go ahead and do that step now. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this one in Photoshop. I'm going to go ahead and edit the original, the one that we worked on last time. And let's go ahead and zoom out. And uh, this is where we were. So that's the fence I had. That's the stuff I took out. So you can see the before and after. But and I didn't spend a lot of time fixing all this stuff around the bike, all this shadowing and clouding, because the, the one thing this image is begging for is a sky replacement. So um, that's, <laughs> that's what I would definitely have done with this shot. And I couldn't show sky replacement back then because we had, we had sneaked peaked it, but we hadn't really announced, I hadn't really released it yet. But now that it's released, I can easily show it. So I'll go up to my edit menu. I'll come down to sky replacement, which is now in Photoshop. And it's going to give me my last sky that I used, which actually even that is just killer, just dramatic and makes this shot look, it's a little even too dramatic for, because it's taken away from our, our biker. But it, and I would probably now brighten that area up of the biker if I were going to use that sky. But just going in and picking a different sky for this, uh, let's try maybe something not so dramatic. Uh, let's try that one. Yeah, something like that, where we got a nice cloud behind them, and it just makes that dull gray. I've been there. We've all taken those dull gray nothing skies. And it just, this can make your shot look so much better. And because this is all non-destructive, once I click OK, um, it will add that as a layer group. So I can always turn it off, always turn it on, and I could turn it off and try a different sky. So I can maybe choose three, four, five different skies until I get the one that I really like. Um, so <laughs> that's what I would have done to finish this one up, is just gone into sky replacement and just made, made the sky for this shot just that much better. Now, again, I could go in and I could lighten him up a little bit. Um, so let's, let's try that. Let's go into our filter menu and let's just convert for smart filters. And once that conversion happens, then we'll go up to our filter menu one more time. We'll come down to the camera raw filter. And that's just showing all that stuff that was left off on that layer. But I'm just going to go into my basic panel and maybe just um, bump up that exposure. Oh, maybe I don't want to do it so much around the whole thing. Maybe instead I want to use the radio filter. And just put a radio filter around him. And that way I can brighten him up without um, brightening up the whole scene. All right, we'll click OK on that. And yeah, yeah, just adding that little bit of spotlight on him makes it look like we added a spotlight on him. <laughs> and it just brings him out that much more. All right, so now we'll save that. And again, that's all non-destructive. It's all on layers. It's all on smart objects uh, or layer groups. And that way I can always come back in and play with it some more. But uh, whoever submitted the shot, this is what I definitely would have done with your shot. Um, just at the time, I couldn't show it when we were editing this because... Sky replacement wasn't official yet, but now, so we went from this to that. So you decide, <laughs> it's your shot, whoever submitted this, 
but that's what I would have done with your photo. So that's kind of how this works. People submit photos. I take you through the process of what I would do to make the photo look better. And um, you guys do whatever you want because it is your photo at the end of the day. I'm just giving you suggestions. All right, let's get out of this one. And there was, I think there was one more I was going to do while I was here. Yeah, I was going to do this portrait. Okay, so this portrait has been sitting here for a few weeks now, a few, maybe even a couple months now. I just had never gotten to it. Let's go ahead and get to this portrait. And I don't, uh, I love working with portraits most of all. So uh, while I do love travel shots and landscapes, portraits are my absolute favorite. So let's go ahead and dive into this portrait. Now, uh, a couple things right off the bat. Um, like I can see that he's got tattoos, which is great, but this almost looks like a burn or a tattoo removal. So obviously we'd keep the tattoos because that's part of that person's identity, but this looks like a a, a mistake. <laughs> it looks like something, you know, he's getting something removed or he got burned or, or you know, some kind of damage to his skin. So I probably would not keep that. The other thing is you can see kind of the, the, the something encroaching into the shot. Looks like it could be the, um, it could be a soft box. It could be just the seamless background, not going all the way to the edge, but it, so it's a cropping opportunity as well. And so first and foremost, and also the background itself looks like the color is not quite right. So I would start with, and by the way, since this is a raw file, let me really start where I would start. And I would go ahead and start with the lens corrections. So I would go ahead and enable profile lens correction. And as soon as I do that, that fixes uh, a few problems right off the bat. That um, it identifies what camera, so I shot this with a Nikon. Uh, or Nikon, it identifies what lens and with that camera and, and adjusts the image based on that combination of body and lens. So first and foremost. Next up, I would go back up to basic and I would go ahead and say, well, since this is a portrait, let's go ahead and put it in portrait, um, portrait um, profile. <laughs> I was trying to think of the word profile. So portrait profile does a very subtle change. Sometimes you may see a difference. Sometimes you may not even see a difference at all, but it just gets me a, a ground floor to work on with no letting Lightroom know that this was a raw image of a portrait. All right, next up, I would probably go ahead and see about fixing that white balance before I do an auto tone. So let's go ahead and grab the white balance eyedropper. And, and even as this one thing I like about Lightroom Classic, even as I hover over the background, I can already see, yep, that background should have been more grayish off white as opposed to it looks almost purple in my scene. So I'll just click that and fix that white balance problem. And now we're off to the, we're off to the races as they like to say. So we're, we're getting there. All right, next up, uh, let's go ahead and do an auto tone. And as I always like to say with auto tone, auto tone is where I click and I agree or disagree. So that means that Auto tone examines your scene, uses machine learning, and compares it with other shots that may look like this, and makes adjustments. I, most of the time, agree with most of the adjustments, but I don't always agree with everything it does, especially with people. So for example, one of the things I don't agree with that it does with people sometimes is it increased the saturation by four. I very rarely, if ever, increase the saturation on a person because it usually starts negatively impacting the skin tone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and double click to reset the saturation back down to zero. Now it also increased the vibrance. And if the person were wearing, like this, we can't see an outfit, we can't see any clothes. So the only thing the vibrance is affecting right now is the skin. And I would argue, well, does it even need it? So I might set that one back to zero. And yeah, it didn't make a big difference, but it just, it shows that it really didn't need vibrance. Now, wearing a, a bright shirt color or blouse color or background color or whatever, and you want to pump up the vibrance of that, that's what vibrance is for. But skin alone, I probably don't need vibrance because his skin is the color of his skin. I don't need to make it more vibrant. All right, so that those were things I disagreed with that I just reset back to zero. And I can also see up here, um, I'm getting a little bit of shadow clipping, but it doesn't look like it's in any area that's important. I could continue to adjust right here on the histogram itself. Uh, as, you, as you hover over the histogram, it will take you through your black shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. 
And so that little blue triangle is letting me know there's a little bit of clipping, but as I hover over it, I don't see anything turn blue in the image. So therefore it's such a small amount of clipping that um, it does not affecting the image at all. But if I still want to fix it, I can just drag right under it to the right until it goes away. And that will fix um, whatever clipping there was. All right, next up, we would go ahead and do our crop. So let's go ahead and crop it. Now, typically I would crop using the original aspect ratio, but in this case, if I use the original aspect ratio, I'm gonna crop off more of his head or more of his body. And I'm, I'm trying to avoid that because I wanna keep as much of the subject as possible. So in that case, I'm gonna unlock the aspect ratio and just come over and crop and just get rid of that one part. Now, since I'm going to Photoshop anyway to fix the whatever this is on his arm, I could save it and not do the crop here at all and not lose any of the image. So let's do that. Let's get out of the crop. Let's hit escape. Let's leave it the way it is. But if I were going to stay in Lightroom, I would absolutely crop off that left edge. But in this case, since I'm heading to Photoshop anyway, I can keep that image by just filling it in with the background as opposed to losing any of it. And that way it then stays the original aspect ratio and I don't lose any of the image. So I make those decisions based on where I'm going to do my editing. All right, so let's um, let's head over to Photoshop, which is um, keyboard shortcut on Mac is Command E. PC would be Control E. If you were in Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, it would be Command Shift E or PC Control Shift E. Um, and I and people noticed this last time I was doing that portrait. It looks darker in Photoshop. That's my it's, color profiles are a little bit off in this case. The skin will look exactly the same once we get back to Lightroom. So don't worry about doing anything with that. It's it's it looks darker. It's not, but it just looks darker. It's displaying darker, I should say. All right. So next up, uh, let's go ahead and I should fix that before we do this again. Um, let's go in and uh, let's fix this this. Um, shadow problem that I was talking about um, encroaching into the image without actually um, without actually having to um, uh, crop the image. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab a rectangle tool. I'm just going to go ahead, a rectangular marquee, and grab that part that's uh, sticking in. Now I'm going to use the patch tool. Even though I didn't draw the selection with the patch tool, the selection that I made with the elliptic or the rectangular marquee, uh, the patch tool will honor and use. Now also because it's on the edge, I'm gonna switch my patch mode. I'm always going back and forth between normal and content aware depending on what I'm doing. In this case, we want content aware. All right, so let's go ahead and move it over <clears throat> and we'll just use that background that's already there. So it blends in, it should blend in beautifully. Once we let once we let it calculate, and and <laughs> there we go. All right, so now deselect, and that part is now fixed without losing any part of my image. All right, so we got that there. Um, now the, the thing that's bothering me the most in this image is this this um, sore whatever this is. Um, if your subject says, hey, I, I want to keep my bruise, then keep your bruise. But in my case, since I don't know your subject and I'm showing you what I would do, I would have to get rid of that bruise. All right. So um, the problem is we have a nice piece of arm here without the bruise. But we don't have enough of it to patch the whole thing in one, one fatal swoop. So we're going to have to do it in a couple stages. So let's go ahead and grab the patch tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and just grab like a good chunk of it. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to switch back to normal so it blends in, but it may not blend in perfectly, so I may have to do this in more than one step. All right, we're just going to go ahead and drag it straight to the right. You can even hold down your shift key so you do drag it perfectly straight, and that's starting to patch that beautifully. Okay, so one more time. And notice I'm not trying to get it exact. I'm actually being, uh, I'm actually overcompensating for the, for, the, uh, for the amount of thing I need to patch because it'll blend in better that way. So now I'll hold down my shift key once again and drag it over. So it drags it over perfectly straight to the right and then we'll patch that. Now, often what happens in a patch is that you end up with remnants that look exactly the same because that's where you got it from. So most people would never notice it, but we have this exact same little shadow 
right here and right here. So we don't want the exact same little shadow because then it looks like we duplicated something. And that happens often when you're cloning. So we just wanna just go ahead and patch that out too. So we don't have an exact match anywhere in that area. So someone can't say, oh, I see the exact same thing twice. So you must have done something. Uh, and as a matter of fact, if you don't even need that shadow, you can get rid of that one too. All right, so that's uh, making me feel a lot better by having that sword, scar, whatever it was, gone from the image. Now, the next thing that's, um, that's, that's uh, an attribute of this particular uh, portrait is that he's got these piercing eyes. These eyes are just like, that's what makes portraits, is just these eyes are just looking directly at you. So let's zoom in on those eyes, and let's see if we can add, add a little or do a little help to them. Now, I see this little piece of jewelry. I almost got rid of that because I was like, what is that? And But it's, it's actually supposed to be there, so we'll keep it. And now I'm just gonna go in and just touch up the eyes just a little bit. Again, nobody's eyes are perfect, so we don't wanna make his eyes completely white, and that's just unrealistic. He's got blood vessels, we all do. But, um, you know, just because you have it doesn't mean you need all of it, so you might reduce it as opposed to get, getting rid of it completely. All right, so let's go in and um, I'm gonna show you uh, what I'm gonna work on here. I'm just gonna switch over to my hands cam here. I'm on a Wacom Cintiq and I'm just gonna go in and use um, patch tool again. Got the patch tool set on normal, just like I left it before. And I'm just gonna start patching some of this out. Now this is, again, uh, this takes time. Making these selections and patching and making these selections and patching. And again, I'm just getting some of the stuff that's standing out the most, um, knowing that I'm not gonna eliminate it completely, and that's not my goal is to eliminate it completely, is basically just to uh, reduce it. Since his, eye is, uh, his eyes are such a critical part of this portrait. All right, just kind of reducing some of that redness so that it doesn't stand out quite as much. And again, we're zoomed in. Most people wouldn't, wouldn't see it at this level anyway, but retouching is about getting rid of a lot of little things or changing a lot of little things, not necessarily changing one big thing. Okay, that's kind of what I wanted to do. Let's get rid of this hair. All right, now next up, let's zoom back out a little bit. And again, if we go back out to normal view, then his eyes look great. Because again, you zoomed in to see that redness, zoomed out to normal view, you reduced it, so therefore it looks like it's almost gone, but even though it's not. All right, um, let's make his eyes sharper. So we're gonna go to the Sharpen tool. It's a tool in Photoshop, it's been in Photoshop pretty much since day one. But back in, in the day one time frame, back in the 90s, the sharpen tool was, and I'll be the first to admit it, was awful because it would damage your photo pretty quickly. So um, years, years ago, the Photoshop team added a protect detail to the sharpen tool so you can use it and actually get good results without necessarily um, over sharpening your image or damaging your image very quickly. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And uh, again, using that same brush, sharpen brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and sharpen around the entire eye. And you know what? Here, let me, uh, let me undo it. Let me duplicate the layer because a lot of people are like, I don't really see any difference. Okay, so let me duplicate the layer so I can show you the before and after. All right, let's go ahead and sharpen that. Sharpen that. And again, it's very subtle because well, the protect detail doesn't let you overdo it as quickly. So I'd have to keep brushing, keep brushing, keep brushing to overdo it. And that's the beauty of the protect detail. Now again, um, we're at that same zoomed in view. That's before, now if you look at his eye, it actually looks dull compared to adding that sharpening. So um, just a little, few brush strokes, I probably did one or two too many, especially on that right eye or his left eye. Uh, but just adding that sharpening to the areas of the photo that should be sharper uh, allow me to get that sharpening I want. And also because I did it on another layer, if I did overdo it, 
I can just lower the opacity of that layer a little bit to reduce how much I did. All right. Okay, um, now at this point, I'd probably just go on a hunt for any kind of just little blemishes that I wanted to get rid of. So uh, switch over to my healing brush and just get rid of little temporary blemishes that like pimples or things that are, will be gone or probably already gone since we took this, since he took this photo or she took this photo. I don't know who took it. Um, but I would just start removing those little things. Not all of it. We don't want to make him look like he's three years old. But just some of it, maybe reduce it by half. Now you also have a couple hot spots here in the photo. So I may take that opportunity to use the patch tool to kind of just patch out that hot spot here. And here. There you go, just reducing them. All right. And again, I could spend the rest of the hour just retouching all the little things and the little hair sticking out from the side, but you get the idea. It's, at this point, it's as much more as you want to do or not. So I'm going to go ahead and save it, close it, switch back to Lightroom, and that will put it right next to the original, or should put it right next to the original. It didn't, put, oh, is it still coming in? There it is, putting it right next to the original. I was like, what? It never did, did that before. All right, so here's the original. Well, actually, that's not the original. That's the one after we color corrected it um, and fixed it. But And here's the one we just retouched. So removing that scar from his arm, uh, removing those hot spots from his nose, sharpening, the, sharpening his eyes, uh, removing that shadow of whatever that was in the left side of the frame, and just uh, a couple quick things to make this portrait look better. So uh, for whoever shot that, it then would be up to you to keep going or doing more if you wanted to do more. All right, so those were a couple of shots that I uh, got to this time that were from previous times before. I'm going to switch over to Lightroom now, just because this is where the newer ones are. And now we're going to get into uh, working with some of the newer ones that I got this week, because I don't want the people, I want ever to think that um, you know, I took the time to submit a, submit a photo and he doesn't get to it. Um, and that does happen because I run out of time because we get so many submissions, but I also want, that's why I go back, do some of the ones we saw before and I go forward <laughs> and do some of the ones that we got this week. So you get to see those too. Uh, what about the gap in the hair braid at the top of the photo? Would you fix that? Let me go back to that photo, the gap at the top of the hair braid. Um, you mean right here? I probably wouldn't. Uh, it'd be an easy fix if you wanted to just patch that in. It, it's, if it bothered, you know, now it's going to be one of those things once you see it, you can't unsee it. So, uh, now that I see it, I would probably would go ahead and take care of it before I didn't really care. Uh, so let's go back in real quickly, edit original. That'll take us right back to where we were and we'll just go in now. And because you pointed that out and now I can't unsee it. Uh, we'll take our patch tool and we'll just take that little area and just patch it in. All right. And again, if you didn't want it to be identical, you'd fix a few of the hair so they're not the same. There you go. All right. Save, close. And if you point anything else out, then that's too bad. All right. So anyway, this is our before and that's our after. So again, uh, uh, I could have gone with it either way, but now I do like it that it's gone. All right, so let's go on. Switching over to some newer photos we just got. And one of the ones, because uh, I've been in this situation before, so I do want to point this one out in particular. Uh, I got uh, this person submitted two group shots, and they're pretty much the same group of people. Uh, one has a few more people on it than the one to the right of it. So to the one to the right of it, here, here it is. And uh, first of all, first problem is the shot's dark overall. So the overall photo is underexposed. But what I'm, what I'm really concentrating on in this particular set of photos is the framing. And in this case, they were using a black background, which <laughs> let me be the first to say, if you're going to use a black background with people with black hair or black clothing, then you might want to put a light on that background to, to have a little separation from the subject. 
because what you you just make it harder for someone with black hair on a black background to see the difference so i love black backgrounds but if you're going to have something that's like black hair black clothing whatever against that black background uh light the background so that you can separate it but anyway the framing is more what I'm talking about here. So in this case, they got pretty much everyone onto black. Like uh, this, this kid's arm is pretty much the only thing that might be sticking out that's not, uh, not on the background completely, but they did a pretty good job here. The problem with this one though, is you got more people than you got background. And I've been here before, not so much more people. Oh, I actually have had more people with group shots and family shots than my background would permit, but also, um, it, it, you know, just, what was I going to say? More people, I've been here before. Oh, or where my subject was jumping and the background wasn't tall enough. So uh, I've run into the situation a couple different ways. What my best advice for you is if you're going to, if you're going to, um, and James uh, saying, don't forget to fix the color problem problem before the next one. I mean, before the next class. I'm not, I'm not going to get a chance to do it today. Um, if you're going to run into the situation where the background may not be tall enough, the background might not be wide enough for the group of people or the subject dancers or whatever that's going to be on it, do yourself a favor. Take everyone off of it. Photograph just the background. Then go ahead and do your shot because if you photograph a shot of the background, then it will be that much easier to composite the group onto a background because you already shot the background separately and you photograph them onto it. So placing that background behind them that's already been photographed in the exact same light, the exact same everything will be that much easier. All right, um, rather have an oversized background than an undersized background, absolutely. So let me show you a couple things I would do on this photo. So first and foremost, let's go in and uh, get out. I'm in Lightroom. Let's go in and edit it. Uh, let's go do some of the things we always do. So let's, um, let's make it a, it's a raw file. So let's go ahead and make it a portrait. Profile, let's go ahead and do auto. Ooh, look at that. So that's giving me some separation right off the bat just by increasing that exposure by hitting auto. Uh, same thing, we're gonna come down here to color and we're gonna make sure that we're not doing things we don't wanna do. Saturation's on zero, good. Oh, wait, 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 no, it's color mixer, sorry. Saturation's not on zero. Let's put the saturation back to zero because again, I don't saturate people. Vibrance, I'm okay in this case with the virus being up a little because they're wearing clothes. They're, they, where we, they have clothes we can see. Uh, so they're, they're wearing a lot of red. So that red's becoming more vibrant. They got some blue on. The blue's becoming more vibrant. So that's cool. I got that. All right. So now that we got the people looking better just by uh, giving them a little bit more light, we still need to fix your background problem. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and edit this one in Photoshop. <laughs> And we're just going to edit a copy of it. So since I'm in Lightroom, that's a command shift E. Um, I hate that they made command E export, control E export, as opposed to edit in Photoshop, because it just drives me nuts when I'm going back and forth between the two programs. Anyway, um, so here we are. So now we got this shot in Photoshop. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let Photoshop figure out what the subject is. So let's go to select subject. And Photoshop will figure out that the group of people is a subject. Now, it, it didn't get it perfect. Like, it's got some of the cord down here. And um, it may not have gotten the hair just right up here. But I don't care about that because all of these people are on the background. I don't care about that. Uh, and, and the cord thing I can fix later. But let's go ahead. And now that I got the group selected, let's go ahead and put them on their own layer. So, uh, Mac, Command-J, PC, Control-J. And that will... Um, that will give me the uh, that will give me the group of people on on their own layer. So that's what I wanted. Now that I got them on their own layer, I can go back to the background because I can do whatever I want now on that background, including taking a piece of the background. So let's go ahead and go to the background. Let's go to our rectangular marquee selection, 
And, and since it is a, a drape, I could either grab just part of the part that doesn't have any folds in it, or I could grab the part that has folds in it, but I'm gonna use the part that doesn't have any folds in it. I'm just gonna make a nice big selection of that part of the, of the drape. So not getting any people, not getting the rod at the top, not getting any folds, just getting a decent selection. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take that selection I just made of the background, of the drape, of the, of the background material, Command J, put that on its own layer. So now I got this. So now that I got that rectangle on its own layer, I can now use my move tool and pick it up and move it over to the corner. And then I can free transform it. Command T, Control T on Windows. And I can just fill in the background. Now I can make it nice and tall for the background. And then I can hold down my shift key because I want to I want to stretch it, stretch it across the entire scene. And so that way I end up with that same background material behind everyone and they're going to match it perfectly because they were against it anyway. So even where it didn't get the heart just right or the heart hair <laughs> just right, it's okay because it's against that background anyway. So um, let me see. Somebody said something. Oh, I missed part of the hat. So in that case, uh, I would have to just go back in and, and, and add the hat back in, which would be probably be easier to do it uh, this way. Let's go ahead and clone, stamp, stamp tool. And we're just going to go ahead and add the hat back in. So, yeah, do, do yourself a favor. And what am I not doing here? Do yourself a favor. Here, let me do it the right way. Let's get rid of that. Turn that off. Command J. Not Command J yet. Select subject. Do yourself a favor. Fix the selection first before you, uh, especially if you're missing a big piece of it, before you go in and, and try and duplicate the layer. So let me fix that big piece because it's easier to fix it now than it would be to fix it after the fact. And I want to find my, there it is, my quick select tool. And we're just going to hold down, or we don't have to hold down anything. We're just going to add down the, add the hat back in and just do a once around. Make sure you're not getting things you don't want and you are getting everything you do want. The hat was important. The hair, yeah, I'd zoom in and make sure I got like, I see a little bit of her red that's not being selected on her scarf. Maybe a little bit too close on his hair. So just make sure you get all that. Because again, you're going to be putting it against the same background anyway. So in other words, don't be lazy on your selection. Make sure you get it all. And make sure you don't get the things you don't want, like whatever this is in the corner. But I do want her hair. And whatever this part is, I don't need. So take a few minutes and get everything selected the way it should be. All right, then do your command J. And then when you put them up above and turn that layer back on, they're all set. Okay, so that's what I would have done in this case to get um, get them all looking like they are again are on a bigger background than what you actually had. All right, next thing I would do is I um, I could finish working here in Photoshop, or I could just go ahead and save it and go back to Lightroom. Couldn't say the TIFF because of a program error. Ooh, I wonder what the program error is. Let's save it on my computer. I may have to um, bring this one back in manually. Oh, I'm getting an error. It's trying to save this. All right, let's do a save as. Let's, oh, cancel. Let's just save it as a PSD. And I don't know why I can't save this. That is weird. What doesn't it like about it? All right, that's the first. <laughs> I've never not been able to save in one of these classes. Let me uh, flatten it and see what happens. Oh, there's something really seriously wrong here. All right, 
if I quit Photoshop and relaunch it, of course I will have lost these changes. Um, but let's, I, I don't have much of a choice. Let's go ahead and quit. Don't save. Getting some kind of weird program error. Let's go ahead and relaunch it. It'll take two seconds just to do that part again. All right, and let's go back to Lightroom and edit again. And um, select subject. Make sure we get the hat. Make sure we don't get the things we don't want. We get that little red scarf there. All right, let's try it again. I just tried to hit save just to see what would happen. I don't know what it is about this photo. Let me try one more thing. Um, let me fix it first and let me um, copy it to a new file. There might be something wrong with this particular TIFF file. All right, so let's uh, go to the background. So I didn't have any problems saving the last one. So I'm not sure what if there's something wrong with this one. All right. Let's create a new document and see what happens. All right, I'm at a loss. I don't know what it is about this file it does not like. Um, but I would save it and move on, but I'm just going to move on. Okay, moving on to the next one. Sorry about that, but not sure why that particular one just is giving me such a hard time saving it. All right, let's move on. Let's go on to, um, to this next photo. All right, here we have a photo that's <laughs> that I have to give you some creative critique on. Um, I know what you're doing, but I, it's a photo of a horse out in the field. And the problem with it is you have a bunch of things distracting away from your subject. So you've got what looks like a fence that's slightly out of focus. I get, you know, you have a shadow or something here. It looks like the actual fence you were standing behind. And that's okay that we can crop that away and we can even crop in closer to your, to your subject. But then you've got all these things, these like weeds or whatever, these trees or whatever these are sticking up in the background. And because they're against the sky, you've got issues with People being able, seeing this more than they're like, oh, there's a horse there because they're so busy looking at the brightest thing in the photo. So if I were going to uh, edit this photo, first and foremost, I'd crop it. Secondly, it also doesn't look like it's very sharp. So it looks like it's slightly out of focus or the subject's not the main focus. So I'd have to sharpen it too. Um, and then I would definitely spend some time cleaning it up to get rid of the distractions. So let's go ahead and first of all, crop it because that's what's bothering me the most. And let's just crop up. And again, crop down. And you'd have to think about, again, what's your subject. I'm assuming your subject's the horse out in the field. And since we're gonna lose some of that stuff anyway, I would probably do something like that. So just because you've got a better photo than the one we've, we were looking at. Next up. You've got um, just issues with it just doesn't look that sharp. So let's go ahead and do an auto auto tone to it. Let's see, is this a raw file? It's not a raw file. All right, let's do an auto tone. Auto didn't do much for us. So we're going to go ahead and bump the shadow some more to kind of bring out more of the horse. There we go. We can now start to see it a lot better. And um, we're definitely going to go to details. 
and we're going to just really pump up the sharpening of this photo because it just doesn't look very sharp. That's better. And we can also go into the effects. And because it's just a scene with a horse in it, we can really bump up. Now, we don't want to get too crazy on the texture. You don't want to really get too crazy on any slider in Lightroom. Uh, but because they will start to look crunchy like it's starting to look. But we just want to bump up that texture quite a bit to, to kind of bring out, again, more detail. Maybe, I shouldn't say quite a bit, a little bit. And then maybe the clarity as well. Clarity also affects the... Um, your, your shadows and highlights, so that's why I don't always use them together, but in this case, it's okay. All right, so now that we got kind of our horse getting there, um, we, we got all these crazy distractions around it. Now we can see the other fence. We can see all these weeds or trees or whatever they are sticking up in the ground. They're just really distracting from your subject, and you could continue to crop it, but I assume you probably want to keep some of that sky. So let's go in. And let's edit this in Photoshop. And I'm just going to do one thing and see if I can save it. I'm just wondering, is my save working? It's not the way I would re really remove that, but let's remove it that way. Hit save. Okay, save works. So something to do with that other file. For some reason, that file wouldn't save. But saves working fine now, so it's something to do with that actual image. All right, so now let's let's get rid of some of the, the most egregious things, which are again just something that isn't helping your photo, and that's these trees. So I would just uh, start to patch those out of there. Because they aren't they aren't adding anything whatsoever to the photo. And they're hurting you more than helping you. Now, if they were beautiful trees, you can make the argument for keeping them. They're not beautiful. They're just things sticking up out of the ground. Now, I'm just, I'm doing a quick and down and dirty job of patching this out. You'd zoom in and take your time and make sure you're not missing pieces like I am probably am. Let me switch to no, our content aware. So I'm just going to start to see I'm leaving some halos behind that I don't want. There we go. I love the patch tool too, as you can see. I use it all the time. All right, that's just better right off the bat. Now you got these this this fence here, and it's up to you. I mean, to me, it's a distraction, but you also have to balance. Is it worth taking the time to take it out? Especially like you got this one post sticking out of the horse's head. So we should definitely get rid of that one, even if we don't get rid of the whole fence. And you got that, whatever that is, sticking up. And just spend some time cleaning this up. And you'll have a good photo. You'll, well, you'll have a better photo. I'll put it that way. So, just taking my time and getting rid of the ones that stand out the most. There we go. And then you would just do the same thing for all the ones that are horizontal. So you just go through these and switch our patch back to normal. And start patching out the horizontal lines. It's going to take you time. I'm not going to do them all. But that's what I would do to, again, just start getting rid of all of those distractions. It just looks so much better without all that stuff around your, your beautiful horse here. All right, so then we uh, we might start looking at the horse itself. Like, it just looks like some 
some hair around the tail there that's kind of distracting. So let's just get rid of that one little strand there. All right, there we go. Yeah, all right, so we're getting there. Um, now, actually, I might do a little dodging and burning at this point. So, uh, like, because I, I can see some shadows in here, and, and you can barely see the sh the face on the horse because, again, of the shadows. So, I might go in and I might uh, run my dodge and burn action. Let me go get it here. Actually, let me put the the panel and button mode, which is what I work on the most. There it is, dodge and burn. And all that does is duplicate the layer, set the blend mode to luminosity, and switches me to the burn tool. But actually, I'm going to switch to the patch tool. I'm not the patch tool, the dodge tool. And I'm just going to go in and just start brightening up some of those shadow areas of the horse just to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. I might have did a little bit too much in that one area. <laughs> Let me back up a little there we go all right and again didn't do a lot but that's before and that's after so it does make a big difference just a little dodge and burn all right you could do a sky replacement I think the sky is fine just being blue like that because we don't want to make the sky so great that it makes you not look at the horse so I think the sky that you have is fine. We'll save that one out, close it, come back to Lightroom, and that will put it, uh, stack it right next to the original. And here they are, so we can see our before and after. And that's where we were. Where, and that, that's at, even after the crop. That's where we were. And now this is where we are. So again, it's about, it's not even so much necessarily about having this super amazing subject. But if you don't have a super amazing subject, then you definitely want to take away all the stuff that makes people not look at your subject. So just getting rid of all that extra clutter, getting rid of that fence completely. I didn't get rid of it completely, but just going in and getting rid of all the stuff that makes people look and say, what's that over there? Huh, is that a tree or a bush? What kind of tree is that? What kind of, like just, you don't want people asking questions. You want them focused on your subject. And you could even um, maybe even go in, uh, let me go back. You might even go in and uh, crop a little bit more. So it, it depends on how much of this field is important to you. Since the crop is non-destructive, you don't want to crop that much. But if your horse is the main subject, then you might even crop it a little bit more to um, to focus on yeah, let me get rid of that. There we go. to focus on your uh, subject maybe something like that there you go so it, it really depends on on how much of that field is important to you but I would say that it's probably not that important okay we've got a couple minutes left and we have some baby shots I don't normally get baby shots so a couple uh, a couple of these baby shots are important let's first and foremost the the only like if, if I had to critique this one shot I love what you did the beautiful beautiful baby you you cropped off the feet and and I would have just again taken a second, back up a little more, make sure you get the entire baby. And like there were there, I, I I can't think of a reason why you would have not included the feet, but that's just my critique. Otherwise, beautiful shot. And here, uh, where you got the shot in, uh, baby's awake and looking and saying, "What's going on here?" And it looks like um, you 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 photograph down and and straight, but this is begging me. For whatever reason, it's just begging me to tilt it. So I'm gonna go to my crop tool and I'm just gonna go to uh, rotate it sideways. And uh, not that much though, I'm gonna rotate a little bit more. And then we can now play with the crop and come in a little bit more on it. All right, now that I've done that, the next thing I might do, it could also be a little sharper 
um, I might go in and just affect the color. And I'm not going to try and uh, white balance it, but I'm just going to add a little bit warmth to it because, again, it is a person. So we want to just make that skin tone look a little warmer. And then we might go in and just add a little sharpening in my last few seconds here. And when I say a little, I mean a lot. Okay. So just uh, make the baby more babyish. There you go. The agony of defeat. Oh, God. It's Friday. I'll let that one slide. All right, guys. I'm out of time. Thanks for watching. Uh, we got more photos left over for next time. But keep in mind, you can always uh, submit photos when I put, the, put up those links. And hopefully, I'll get to yours at some point. If I don't get to it that week, as you can see, I still keep them and go back to them. And we continue to work. So, cheers, everybody. Have a good one. I'm out.